So happy Friday. Uh, you made it. We're at the end of the work week and I thought I would do a quick review of, of a couple of drinks that are affordable, uh, I think reasonably approachable and, and would be what some people call a daily drinker, right? Something that you would uh, look for on your shelf just for a nice drink, maybe relax, uh, take a bit of stress off, uh, but not worry about pouring, not worry about price, um, but just looking for that flavor profile you're going for. So two we're gonna look at today is Bullet Bourbon, a little bit more rye, uh, and Buffalo Trace. So this will be my quick review of both of those. If you hear any noise around the background, it's just because it's, it's Friday, people are trying to get some work done, and my cat's running around. See you in a moment. Well, I'm going to try again. Um, I've had a few mistakes here with my cat going nuts. Uh, and then my family needed me. And then uh, with the roofers going next door. But getting back to a very simple, quick uh, showdown between two, um, uh, I want to say iconic, but really I feel Buffalo Trace is really the iconic bourbon here. And Bullet, uh, while it has a great bottle, and you'll see it in every bar, uh, is is actually a relatively newcomer. So uh, just very quickly some thoughts that I have about these two uh, bourbons. Buffalo Trace uh, is from the Buffalo Trace Distillery. It started in 1999. Uh, no, not the distillery. <laughs> the release of Buffalo Trace bourbon. They started this particular release in 1999. Um, I think it was George T. Stag Distillery before then, and then it changed to Buffalo Trace, and, uh, and then they released this. I'm just pouring a little bit because it's kind of early in the night, so um, I don't want to overpour. I want to maybe review a couple of other whiskeys. Um, but this is a, uh, a low rye bourbon, so the mash bill is not released. It's their mash one, uh, but it uh, would be less than 10% rye. Uh, some other bourbons that I've had, actually I came to this one later than I had some of their other uh, maybe um, would be considered a higher uh, va value or, or rated bourbon like uh, Eagle Rare, uh, Stag, I'm trying to think of what else, I think is the same mash bill, but this is 45% alcohol by volume and it's low rye. Then coming over here to um, Bullet, Bullet also 45%, but it is known to be a high rye uh, mash bill. Um, probably pushing upper 20s, I think, around 28%. Uh, and it's, you know, it's put out by Diageo. Um, and I believe when it first came out, it was made by the Four Roses Distillery. Uh, now, I think they have their own distillery, but the internet seems awash with uh, whether they really have their own distillery. Certainly, it used to be put out by Four Roses. Um, but this comparison today is not meant to be really a deep dive. It's meant to be just a quick comparison uh, on a couple of bourbons that would be, I think, fairly easy to get a hold of, uh, often, often on sale here in Canada, uh, and have good value. So nosing on Buffalo, boy, for me, that's a pretty classic bourbon. Um, you know, I've got the sweetness of corn, vanilla, a little bit of caramel, maybe, maybe some wood in there. But, uh, but not, um, not terribly complex, but quite welcoming. Pretty good. Uh, coming over here to Bullet. And again, I should have reset my nose, should have had some coffee beans or something, but it's just a quick, quick comparison. I, I want to get at the night, and I've been interrupted shooting this video a few times. Uh, if any of my fellow YouTubers out there have noticed that you sit down, you want to shoot a video, you got, a, you got an idea in your head, oh, you know what, I should get that out there. And then, uh, it, nothing works and that's kind of the night that I'm having right now. So if I could just push through this uh, Give you guys a sense if you're considering these two Now see this to me is a very different nose. I think uh, some people might find it astringent or the alcohol is quite present, but But I actually um, pick up, you know, a little bit of fruits. I want to say cherry. No one says cherry with whiskey, but To me, maybe cherry, uh, but some spicy. Like to me, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be something spicy, peppery, that kind of thing. 
Whereas if I come back to the Buffalo Trace, it's far more welcoming. Uh, yeah, honey. Yeah, I'm gonna give it just a quick little taste. Um, you can see they're both like for color wise, uh, you know, they're both very simple. Uh, for age, I couldn't find Buffalo Trace. Most people that I that I, I kind of looked up trying to get a sense of you know, who might be on the inside and actually understand what the age on Buffalo Trace might be. It seemed like they were putting it a little bit older than I expected. They were saying like maybe an eight year. Um, and I would be very surprised at that just because it's a non-age stamp bourbon. Uh, it is priced um, not quite, you know, bottom shelf price, but, but pretty close in my neck of the woods. So um, I would say it's probably six years. I'm gonna give it a taste. Mm. And again, actually, I, I quite like this one. There I can get some of the wood coming out um, and, and a little bit of the finish. The finish isn't terribly long. Um, but, um, oh, there's a little bit of spice in there, but it's, it's I would say, um, this is a nice sipper. And if I was pouring bourbon for someone, and I started this point in this review to be, uh, you know, not worried about your best bourbons, not worried about um, spending a lot of money, but to get something that you could appreciate drinking. Um, I would drink that one neat, um, or a splash of ice in it just, just to cool down at the end of a work day. I think that would be nice. Um, coming here to the bullet now. Oh, and a little bit of floral notes. You can definitely pick out the rye in this one. Once you get past the bit of astringency in the nose. Yeah, and the mouthfeel on that one is a little bit thinner. Um, and the sweetness is in a different way. Um, the Buffalo Trace, really that candy corn, uh, caramel, toffee, burnt sugar. This one, Uh, you know, I get the drying mouth feel, a little bit of pucker in the cheek, um, but there's still there's still sweetness to it as well. It's not um, it's not a straight barley. It's not a scotch by any means. They're both bourbons, and, and the bullet is a bourbon as well. Now, to me, to try to rate these is very very challenging. One of my first um, apps that I discovered when I started to move out of scotch and just enjoying it with friends to thinking about, well, is this a good scotch or not? So you start following certain people or using apps or whatnot to, to find out, is this worth buying here in the store? And I use distiller or distillery.com. I, I know it's not a, a fantastic site, but for me, it's been really good because the app is, is quick and they've got you know an expert review and a crowdsource review. And, and it's interesting to me that, that that place put bourbon rated higher by an expert, bourbon, they're both bourbons, bullet, Thank you. Uh, I think it was like 86, not high, but a little bit higher. And then they had Buffalo Trace at 83. But then other people that I follow online a lot, you've heard me mention uh, Scotch Noob, great place. Uh, Breaking Bourbon, fantastic. Uh, love their site, love the way they break things down. Um, what else, Rum Howler in Canada. And, and, and almost universally all of them put Buffalo Trace higher. And so the reason why I put these two against each other, aside from that, for me, they're almost always between 32 and $38. So they're right in the same price point is, um, you know, you read these different reviews, they all have different scores, is, is to say why I think that might be. And, and that, that must be the palate of the reviewer because that changes all the time, or perhaps what someone is looking for in a bourbon. If you're just pouring something to sip, uh, and you're coming, you're coming to bourbon from, from um, uh, maybe Canadian whiskey. You know, I think, I think, uh, no, now that I said that, uh, this is gonna be a tough one. If I'm gonna give them a star value, I would give Buffalo Trace three and a half stars, and I'd give Bullet three stars. Having said that, uh, if I'm looking for that rye spice, it's pretty clear that's what they're going for with Bullet. And I think for me, it would make a more interesting bourbon and Coke. Uh, for me, it would make a more interesting um, drink later on the night where I wanna really taste it. Uh, whereas Buffalo Trace is, is uh, I don't know, um, a little smoother, a little bit uh, more well-rounded, a little more general bourbon. 
Um, I have to say it's put together just a little bit better right from nose through the feel in the tongue the way it, it coats quite pleasantly and then kind of breathing the after you know what have I got left in there then those wood notes come through that I like in bourbon um, still left with a little bit of a gentle sweetness you know whereas bullet right in the nose it kind of perks me up spicy interesting a little bit of burn they have a mellowed out the alcohol I didn't say age on this one I really don't know uh, again not age stamp I'm gonna say it's probably five I think it's a little bit younger than the Buffalo Trace but a wash really and the and the taste and then through to the finish to me again um, feels very high low um, the pepper in the mouth is kind of nice and then I don't get anything else but oh then I get a little bit of sweetness floral and then nothing else and then in the finish I get that dry pucker and then nothing else and so it's it's hard to say um, honestly um, for that price point here in Canada by the way if I have any American viewers I'm totally jealous of uh, of the prices that I, I hear you guys talking about bourbons you know best bourbons under 25 bucks uh, breaking bourbon or bourbon night um, great great podcast or great uh, show um, you know for us a $30 bourbon and really uh, these are like standard 35 and standard 38 uh, if someone's not playing with price I bought them both um, lower than that but but that's kind of prices in Canada and for us that's a, a really good value uh, so just you know relaxing back into why I started this quick quick video cast here on Friday is, is to say that you know um, now that I'm getting more and more into the whiskey scene and following a lot more people on um, on Twitter and uh, Instagram there's a lot of guys pouring some really excellent whiskey I mean really nice stuff and and then tossing out scores of you know 88 or 90 and they're spending 200 bucks a bottle and 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 I want to be that guy I mean let's that's not uh, let's not kid ourselves uh, I'd love to be the person who could drop uh, 200 bucks on a bottle and and then pour it for fun with you guys on on YouTube and then um, move on to the next bottle but in reality uh, when I'm sharing something with a friend when I've got a neighbor over uh, or I'm drinking with my cousin Brad we're really looking at um, you know what's what's a good drink what has some flavors we're looking for what's interesting it's not gonna burn us out uh, you know not gonna you know, not gonna get hung up on bitter or, or, or too astringent uh, and so either of these bourbons actually fit that bill I suppose I, I really would side with the reviewers that went with Buffalo Trace if push came to shove or I was I was recommending for someone I really didn't know at all I would say um, Buffalo Trace is going to be your better uh, bourbon experience uh, but if you love rye and I do uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed with with bullet now it's not a review but um, I did try their 10 year old and it is uh, it has been smoothed out better that little uh, that extra time in oak I think has brought their flavors you know when I talk about that punchy high low I think it's really um, helped bring them together I don't think it fundamentally changed the profile so if you don't like bullet you're not gonna like their 10 year old but if you like bullet and you just wish it had a little bit more uh, like it was a consistent song as opposed to just uh, some good musicians um, then I think you should try their 10 year old that'd be my review three and a half three stars uh, probably recommended probably uh, try it uh, maybe get a shot of it before you buy a whole bottle thanks I think the back end of my reviews you know when I talk about what's going on locally um, I, I would have to say if you're in the Edmonton area the the whiskey festival in November that the uh, Windermere and the Sherwood Park uh, wine and beyond I've said it a couple of times are having I think would be a great experience uh, they pour uh, over 200 whiskeys that night and uh, if you pay a hundred dollars then you get access to 
you know, a little higher quality, a little more expensive uh, drinks. And the, um, the rare collection of the Northern Border collection uh, is, they're going to be pouring those. Uh, but if you pay, oh boy, it's either 50 or 60, I can't remember, you can look it up online. Um, you still get access to a great night of a lot of different whiskeys. So hopefully I'll see some of you guys there. Should be a great time. Um, for other local, uh, you know, here's a, here's a tip. I would say maybe not a tip, but uh, but just a just a comment. Um, don't be afraid of checking out small independent um, liquor stores. One of the things that's really cool is uh, you probably get to know the proprietor a little bit uh, quicker than you do in a big store, and also uh, they they at times will have purchased. Um, a bourbon, not, not these kind of high movers. These move pretty quickly, so they, they kind of purchase and sell them regularly, but they might have purchased something um, a few few months ago, possibly a year ago, possibly two years ago, uh, that's a little higher quality. It kind of did a stretch, and then no one in that particular town really likes it, so it's just sitting on the shelf. And I have definitely gone to small towns uh, and, and gone to a small liquor store and seen a bottle that is currently you know, 80, 80 bucks or something like that. And it's still sitting there for 45. Well, maybe that's too extreme. Maybe for 50, 54, that kind of thing. Uh, and that makes it a great deal and a pretty cool trip. So uh, just a comment to anyone who's getting into whiskey, uh, likes to go uh, for a drive, likes to get out in the country. Um, think of that little tip. It's kind of cool going into smaller liquor stores. Lots of times they have absolutely nothing. But occasionally you can tell they were, they were kind of having a little fun a year ago or two years ago or something like that and they've bought something and then our market has just grown like crazy in the last few years and so um, their prices may still reflect what they bought it at. Anyways, just thought I'd share that tip out. Other than that, hey guys, I'm starting to get a few comments down below and I love that. Uh, I don't know, I wish my phone would pop when you make comments, so often it's it's a couple of days before I, I find out that someone's commented, but please do. Um, but comment, uh, like, like videos. I'll try to get more unique stuff, and especially more Canadian stuff. This is just a quick in and out, uh, light pour comparison of something that's pretty, pretty available. Um, but subscribe, and uh, you know, in the comments you can also let me know, hey, do you have this, do you have that? Maybe I have a bottle on, on my shelf. And I'd love to do a review specific to a viewer request. That's my show. Please subscribe. Uh, to the Whiskey Neighbor, I'm John. And uh, I'd love to share a drink with you again uh, next week. Take care.